Hey guys, this is Ifaris and I got my hands on The Crew. Now, The Crew is an open world racing game developed by Ivory Tower and Ubisoft Reflections. Those are the guys that brought you the series like Driver San Francisco. So, it will be released on November 11th if you're in the US and November 14th if you're in Europe. Yeah. Um, first of all, it's quite fun, I have to say. In that game you can drive around all the US, all the states, the whole country. You can drive everywhere. On the streets, on the dirt, just pick a point in the sky, uh, in, the, in the horizon and you can go there. It's no problem. But... Uh, the game already has uh, caused some <laughs> some trouble for the PC players. I mean, it's it's Ubisoft. As a PC player, it's it's sad that I have to do with this. But if I hear Ubisoft and PC, I'm gonna be skeptical. I can't help it because they have given me so much reason to be skeptical. And the crew is just another example. Uh, when the beta started. A player found out that the game currently is locked at 30 frames per second. And yeah, the developer basically said this is intended and they want to release the game 30 frames per second locked on all platforms, meaning PC, PlayStation 4, place the Xbox One and Xbox 360. It actually doesn't come out for PlayStation 3, no idea why but okay and yeah after a massive shitstorm they announced officially that they are working to bring us the 60 fps lock but actually i'm not really i'm not really satisfied by that i mean why do you work towards a certain lock if you have a guy there that spent a lot of money to get 200 frames per second in your game. Why would you force him to play at anything less than 200? It, it doesn't make any sense. Well, okay, that aside, we have some other problems. I'm a fan of um, simulation racing games and I entered the cockpit view in the crew Luckily it has one, I mean in times of the games like Grid 2 it's apparently not really uh, given that every racing game has cockpit view but luckily this one has and the first thing I notice is the mirrors don't work the rear uh, mirror, the side mirror, every mirror doesn't work and that's I'm unpleasant, I think. I don't like it at all. I mean, in a racing game, you gotta have mirrors. Even now, Battlefield didn't really have mirrors, but... Uh, Call of Duty, yeah, Call of Duty. Advanced Warfare showed on Gamescom that they have cars with mirrors and they work. So why should a racing game that wants to shine as a good game not have mirrors? It doesn't make sense. Another very, very essential part of a racing game is its handling. And the developer said that this might be because we don't have the best cars available and all the tuning parts available in the beta, but at the moment the cars feel sluggish. You have a little bit floaty handling and it has a certain delay so you can't really control your car and it doesn't feel fun um, I think that's the point a game should be fun right and yeah es especially at, hard, at high speeds you can't really control your car at all and talking about high speeds if you are driving straight a straight line and the pilot in the seat like you still moves the steering wheel in a really really strange way 
Like he, he's practically shaking it. And if you're driving 250 kilometers per hour, you don't shake your steering wheel. Seriously, bad things gonna happen. But the game does it. And it doesn't really react to the handling, but it, it's just, I, I guess it's a way of showing, look, you're going at very high speeds and the car is hard to control and everything, but it doesn't really look good, I think. It, it irritates me. It confuses me. And also the feeling of the speed. The game told me I was hitting 250 and it felt more like 120, maybe. It doesn't really feel fast and also the distance feeling. I mean the scale of the map is great. The developer said it takes 90 minutes from coast to coast. I tried to do the same. I went from Key West to Seattle. That's the video you see in the background. I, <laughs> I increased the speed a little bit. But yeah, it took me 47 minutes maybe, which is still a lot. It's not as much as they said, but it's still a lot. The map is huge and I love it. But if you are in Key West and you want to go to St. Louis, maybe, um, the GPS tells you it's 28 kilometers away. In real life, it's 2,200 kilometers away. And that small number, like 28 kilometers, what? That That's not good. I... No. Why would you do that? It's just way too low. It, if you have a really huge map and then you tell me that the next city is just 20 kilometers away and in real life it would be 2000, then it just tells you, hey, that's small. That's small. Our map is not that big. Uh, why would you do that? It's not good. So I hope that Ubisoft can fix that. In, I mean, the feeling of speed, okay, that's that's over. You can't really fix that. That's in the game. But tweaking a little bit of numbers like 20 kilometers into 2000 kilometers, that's okay. You can do that. And I hope they will. They also said that they are working on the mirrors, on the mirror problem. But it's not really much of a focus for them so they won't be delivering that on release but maybe patch it afterwards i mean that's nice it's better than nothing but i still why i th i don't really comprehend it that you would do such a thing but yeah well i hope it gets better and it would be also nice the racings are uh, the races, sorry, the races are great and you have a really seamless connection uh, between free ride and races and that's nice, although after some challenges you have to put away some menus and during that time the game in the background continues but you can't steer so sometimes you just steer into some walls so that's... Mm, it can be tweaked but what I also would like to see and I gotta make that comparison with uh, Test Drive Unlimited 2 here because the crew is very very similar to that game. And in Test Drive Unli Unlimited 2 you could do things like turn down the windows and uh, turning signals for example, turning on and off the lights and all those things. Th those would be great in a free ride. It would be a lot more immersive. You ha can you could have more fun in that game that way and speaking of turning signals it would be nice if the NPCs the other cars of the state would also be able to give turning signals because nothing is more frustrating than going 300 kilometers per hour and then getting hit by a ninja NPC turning last second without any warning and during my ride from Key West to Seattle, that happened several times. Um, yeah, I, I don't like it. But apart from that, the game is good, but it's far from being exceptional. And I hope they learn. Ubisoft told us in a press conference that they learned and they will cater more to the PC player, but what they are doing with the crew 
doesn't really show their newfound interest in PC players. So yeah, let's hope for the best. So, if you have played the crew or if you have any questions, feel free to post them below in the comments. Click like if you like the video, click dislike if you dislike my stuttering because I'm doing this live. <laughs> um, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and see you next time.